Well, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. The video today is going to be showing how we got the siding and the roofing primarily on. Now, the camper is not finished yet. In fact, these particular jobs are not done yet, but we're really, really close. So what I wanted to do is walk you through and show you really what we went through over the last number of weeks. First thing I'm doing is hot gluing down the wire harnesses. Instead of stapling, the original manufacturer stapled everything in here, which is, I guess, fine. My track record on this is pretty bad. I've been known to run staples right through wires. So in this case, we're just gonna hot glue things in place. And we're just gonna put a little, gonna put a little in here. Pretty much ready for insulation and decking. What I've done is made some corrections to this corner. I wasn't real happy with that. I'm still not thrilled, but it's better. I took the grinder to make sure that we're level and smooth at each of these control joints. I believe we got rid of all the staples and things that would prevent uh, the material laying down smooth. So next thing here is to apply insulation. So since our last commercial break, ta-da, what do you know? That's a different look. Just wanna say, I'm feeling a little itchy, you know? Just a little uh, 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 itchy. But uh, that is predominantly the original fiberglass insulation. I bought some mixture of that white stuff there. And uh, well, I think now it's time to apply the glue and start running decking. I'm Let me get everybody caught up here. This is apparently some missing sequences, but Putting that wood on and running the camera at the same time was pretty impossible just by myself. So um, there you have it, combination of staples and screws and a lot of glue and it is decked. Let's come up here and take a closer look at the roof and roll it over the top here. I'm going to put another piece right here shortly. Right now, still have to trim the edges along here and a few things. And But anyway, I'm overall pretty happy with it. I just got the call. Uh, Cash Campers has at least my first load of metal ready to go. This is the aluminum. Uh, I've purchased two different styles, a little thicker and thinner one. Uh, dark gray, it's light gray on the back side. It's a 0.034 thickness. And then I purchased a black that's white on the other side that I believe is a 0.030 or 0.30 thickness. And uh, that one's gonna be easier to bend and form around the, the front sleeper area. And I kinda like the idea of doing the two-tone. So, I'm going to go with black trim, you know, the black nose and all that. Cash Campers, uh, um, homegrown camper company in Alaska. It's only, I don't know, about five miles from my house. Here it is right here. So we are uh, going to drop in. They, This is where they manufacture campers. They repair campers here. They keep stuff in stock for pretty much anything. And um, they built some beautiful models. There is a cash camper set up right there on the back of that truck. They take your truck measurements and they build out your uh, truck um, camper to the to your truck. Uh, they build them, make them to order. They don't keep tons and tons of uh, generic campers in inventory. So. Uh, very, very cool place, and we are gonna get in here. 
It is Cash Camper. 50 years serving the valley. We're gonna get in here and take care of this metal. All right, guys, I, I got my whole metal load except for one piece that I had them break for me that goes under the sleeper cab over portion. Uh, I've got metal in my back seat. I got metal in my bed. And we are in the rush hour Alaska traffic. This is what nearly $2,000 will buy you. That doesn't seem like much at all. But we should have in here. They mark numbers on things for me. Uh, I thought they did. Anyway, um, yeah. So here's one of the sides. There should be, there's another side. Um, this should be the lower part of the side. This is the front of the camper and this is the rear of the camper. I believe that that is my, that's the siding. I've got, this is called uh, reuse, recycle, re something. Um, that's the styrofoam that was in the camper walls when I disassembled it. And it comes complete with pre-stained styrofoam. Not a big fan of putting that in there, but cost savings, you know, the whole, you know, I'm not gonna have to throw that away if I can use it. But what we've done in the last little bit is I was actually able to repurpose, reuse, recycle uh, all of the foam that was originally on the camper, with the exception of this spot down here, this uh, area actually didn't have foam. Somebody had put plywood in here before and kind of filled that whole void up. So I ran a couple layer thick of the Reflectix in there. It just, it didn't make sense to go buy a sheet of foam for that one corner. I'm letting all of this expand. Come on around here and you'll see. I put the spray foam in and closed the gap. So I'm gonna come back here and shave all that off. Make it smooth uh, up front. We've got the um, foam in here, as well as the spray foam. This one I did a little bit earlier this morning, so this one's, this one's pretty much ready to shave off the excess. We went back down to Cash Campers and picked up this monster piece of metal here. This, I had them break this for me. Uh, this is the section that's going under the, under what I could call them the sleeper. Uh, I did do a little sample piece to try to get some ideas. This is the color we're going with and to get some ideas how, how easy it does or doesn't bend with a rubber mallet. It's not too bad. So let this dry. Probably going to go grab some uh, lunch and shave it and come back and then start, gonna start running the metal. All right, everybody, get in here and look at this. This is the first piece that we put on. Um, hopefully I've made the maximum number of mistakes on this piece. Um, basically, it's a matter of kind of getting it in place, pushing it, stapling it. Um, my wife kept asking if I had the air gun with too much air pressure, and I did. I was punching through instead of, instead of grabbing. Uh, that's not good. There is trim going on these things, so that's the good news. Um, otherwise, the, um, this is a protective coating film that will come completely off when the, when the time is right. Uh, going to take a break to think through this next piece. Second part on. Um, that was a battle. That was a fight. But I think we're good. Um, I think we're good. So it's early Sunday morning. Uh, I've been to my favorite coffee shop in town. If you're ever in Palmer, Alaska, make sure and go to the Purple Moose and ask for one of their breakfast burritos. They are amazing, just delicious, worth it. But um, yesterday we got the sleep over cab area meddled in and looked at this last night and looked and looked and looked at the back of this last night. And um, I just don't have that much experience with this. So trying to figure out the best route to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started this morning and put this lower piece on. I put together a staging area, if you will, in here where my green truck usually sits for the metal. Um, the guys over at Cast Campers did a great job buying this all up for me. As you can see, 
see, it's got some pressure behind it. To help her come out and help me get this part hung. And really, at this point, it's a matter of uh, kind of getting the wrinkles out of it, working it across. I scribe the line, which should match up with my door frame, where I need to put my staples. On the back side, I've got to think through every step. You have to think through the next step. My intention is to treat this side the same as the raw side of the camper. So what I'm going to do is I've come down an inch and, inch and a half that I'm going to wrap it under. So we've got that. And then this, this lip is going to get pulled in and hammered tight against the body of the camper. Well, that's one of the ways we cut the metal. So this piece is going to be our inside mirror piece that goes in here. Going to let's put this on this Camaro workbench I ordered off of the internet. That's a great workbench. What's nice about it is that it's pretty pretty sturdy, and then. When you need it in a different place, you can start the engine and move it. Pretty handy. <laughs> One's flanged. Mostly installed rear panel wrapped in metal. Uh Go. One door opening, partial, and my cup of coffee has been hiding behind the door. I forgot to grab it before I went to town on this. Alright guys, I'm going to park you on the Camaro workbench and uh, this is something here, this is something that I've not been looking forward to, which is a long rip. <laughs> so the one thing I've been doing is putting butyl tape on the overlap. I'd like to say it can't hurt. Um, imagine, you know, if I'm pressure washing it or something and blowing water up against it, this might prevent wash up under the lip, but honestly, I just can't see where, I can't see where this is going to help or I don't know, it possibly could hurt more than help. So this can be a lot easier for you to witness the hem flange action. Here, basically... So here is the rear, complete with the power outlet installed. Window opening cut. We're going to go around the corner here. She is getting the edge ready for the butyl tape. This is our next piece. It's going to do the bottom two foot just under the window. Updates, updates. Whoa, what do we have here? So while you were blinking your eyes, I was busy working. This is the first part of this side 
in. I still have to make cutouts for the water um, vent, drain, and fill. That'll come later, not a rush right now. What else are we doing? Well, we are getting ready to make the big cut on this guy, 14 feet, seven inches long. Now we can see. Now let's just drink this in for a minute. A moment of victory, I think. Um, windows cut out, shape is formed. <clears throat> There's a lot more to be done, but this gets us off to the races now on this side. I just wanted to share with you, this is the remnant of the camper, the sleeper, the aluminum, the wood. Oh, I have the, uh, I have the curtains in here. I wanted to keep those, but my wife said no. And um, it's also, this is in the garage because it had snow in it like crazy. And that had to melt because I didn't want to go to the dump and pay for snow. So we're taking a coffee break. Late in the afternoon, probably not a good idea. But let me bring in where we are. This is very difficult to show in process because my hands are just full. But this is the lower section of our fold over. And it is, as you see, stapled and beat over with the uh, big friendly hammer. This marking right here is where I have a stud running all the way across. And I'm going to utilize that. I'll put a piece of trim molding on this panel and uh, I've got butyl tape underneath it. I'll put a piece of trim molding on this that'll have something to bite into behind it to go all the way across the front end right there. So now um, I'm gonna butyl tape, close this up, staple my side in place on both sides, cut this guy back. He's, he's too, he's too uh, long on this side. Cut him back, uh, butyl tape, I have to pull the protective coating back and then um, beat that one around after it's been trimmed and that will seal the nose comb and all the major sheet metal work will be done. All right guys, be very careful what you're learning from me here. If you're trying to repeat any of what, what you're seeing me do, maybe wait till I finish the series to find out if I did it even remotely right. But what we've got going on here is the under overlap. I'm gonna to have to trim, obviously, the excess butyl tape off. But our lower section of this went under. This goes over. So as rain comes down, it is not encouraged to go behind this wall. I've got something I'm really jacked up about. Apparently, there is this device that allows you to, when properly installed, allows you to actually see through the wall of your camper. You can literally see through what's going on out there. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, they actually call them windows. So um, my windows here, probably, probably my biggest mistake right now, on the camp world was not finding a way to reach deep and buy brand new windows. They're pricey. And because the structure of this particular RV has rectangular windows and it actually has an extremely large one on the uh, right hand side, replacing that with a modern one was going to require additional framing changes and whatnot. 
and now that I actually have cut the hole open it's a done deal so I've got to that's over four foot right there anyway now that I've cut that open I'm gonna have to put that window back in the trouble is the windows are tired they're old they're tired the mess of a window over here is the one that goes in the back in the closet I've taken it all to pieces and gone in and wire wheeled it run a roll lock over it uh, this is all just loose just hanging here my current plan is to get this in the sink scrub it really well clean it put it on the uh, on the vise and straighten these flanges back out smooth and then I'm gonna try to spray this thing black on the outside with a satin black finish we'll know here in the next couple of hours if that's even going to be doable it's the best thing that I can think of at this point so hang on and let's see what we do in order to make this incredible invention this wall see-through device back functional it should look okay from the street so uh, we'll let that dry. I'll go do some other things. I'm gonna okay. Updates: getting ready to put the primer and paint on these components. We've got our door frame rebuilt, riveted, screwed back together. We have our door with all the new aluminum sheet metal in, and the exposed portions that we're going to turn black. So I've got that, and I also have the hood for the uh, stovetop. I'm gonna go ahead and get some coating on that while I'm doing this, even though that's a later project. It is window install time. This is the front bunk window. I got ahead of myself here without the camera rolling and got that window in with my wife's help. I kind of buggered up some of the trim on the inside. Uh, I'm gonna have to come back and fix that, but it is what it is up front here. We also got the front window in, pulled the uh, plastic protection off to take a look at that glossy glossy black stuff so i um, gonna go ahead and get this one in a couple tips about these windows you want to make sure you don't put them in upside down uh, there is a slot in the bottom for the rain to leak out uh, essentially you know nothing super sealed on these the water can run and get behind the windows in a couple of places but it's designed to channel into an internal gutter and then run out. So if you've got windows that are backing up uh, on you, check your drains. Make sure that they're draining. So we got that one in, and I'm going. Got the kitchen one in. I also got the new uh, hood vent in for the stovetop, and uh, I'm going to head up there, put the butyl tape on, and get that one screwed in. So. Um... What do you guys think about my attire? You know, I wear this sweatshirt and I have a green one I predominantly wear when I'm working. And these are worn out. In fact, this is so bad that if I put anything in this pocket, it falls out. But I just can't quite bring myself to throw them away yet. But I think I need to. So, um, completely unrelated to anything else going on, I think I'm going to toss this sweatshirt. I think this is it. I think this is the last time you're going to see it. Speaking of the last time you're going to see something, <clears throat> it's the last time you're going to see the roof with no skylight holes in it. They're both cut. I have put back here that brace. The reason why I put that up here is this is truly not a walk-on roof. That area doesn't have much support. And I just don't want to take a chance of something stupid happening, even though it's stronger now than it ever was from the factory with that extra quarter inch of paneling up there. But regardless, I'm just putting that there. Makes me feel better. After the roof skin is on and the trim is on, I will take that out. So um, it feels crazy in here. It literally has uh, that sound of being closed in. So exciting. So we're getting the roof prepped to put the roof on the roof. 
and right now what I'm doing is trying to deburr sharp edges along here. I've got a flap wheel on my Rolock tool and I'm looking for any loose areas of the siding and I'm running the Rolock and I'm giving it the field test. If it doesn't, if it doesn't cut me, I don't think it'll cut the membrane that I'm going to stretch over. So this is the MFM peel and seal that I'm using on the roof. Not a lot out there about it on the internet as far as people using it on campers. Just a little bit here and there, but maybe just not as much as I'd like to have seen. Uh, I ordered these from Lowe's. They sent them right to my house by FedEx Express, which was nice. Each one of these packets does 100 square feet, but it really you're not necessarily going to be able to get 100 square feet depending on how your roof is set up. Um, this stuff is designed to be rolled out. There's a peel and stick rear protective coating you pull off and then it's pressure released as you put down on there to try to stick to your substrate. The directions say that it'll go over wood, masonry, a smooth asphalt roofs, things like this. Um, it recommends an oil-based primer. However, I called them and wanted to confirm whether or not I needed to prime this roof, and they said that because this is new plywood that I have up here, that I'm fine as long as it's good and clean. So I vacuumed it, I blew it off, and then I used like a, a Swiffer dusting pad to get it as clean as possible. The actual material, this weighs, uh, I think this weighs 30 pounds or something for this roll. So not putting a whole lot of weight. It's a 0.45 mil thickness, is my understanding. And take a look in here. So um, it's silver aluminum coating with this backing on here that peels off to expose the sticky. If you give it a good give it a good sniff, it smells like asphalt tar a little bit. So um, it does have that kind of material in it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead get up here on the roof. I'm, it's uh, 7:30 in the evening, Alaska time. You shouldn't be putting this on in less than 50 degrees. I keep the garage in here about 68. So um, I'm gonna cut all these a little bit longer than I need them, lay them out, let them overnight kind of settle to kind of take some of this roll out of it. And then tomorrow we'll start with the, trying to put it on. So one of the handy things about this material is it has a mark on it for your three inch overlap. Makes it easy, that way you don't have to pop a chalk line or something to figure out how you can wind up nice and even. It looks like it's going to take five rollouts, this last rollout will be a short one, in order to get it completely covered. Again, this is why I'm laying it out the night before, trying to get this wrinkle out as much as I can. Okay, so here is the end process of putting these peel and seals on. What we decided to do was lay them in place, mark them, and then cut the backing paper off in the center peel back the backing paper and lay it down one side at a time. And then that leaves us with the overhang here to be worked in. This is the one that's going to be the most difficult. We were able to get this one here pressed in with very little wrinkles. This is going to be the, the really ugly one. So a makeshift rolling pin out of a uh, caulking tube and she is busy working those air bubbles out. 
the skylights right there we'll cut that out later and we're just working it down uh, i can come back with a little bit of heat and uh, the roller and try to get the rest of those bubbles out but it is uh, showing 68 degrees in here requires 50-50 minimum temperature hotter it gets the stickier it gets this is actually working to our advantage to not have it ultra crazy sticky at the moment so here we go we've got to put down two more and then i'll start working the edges well finishing up the roof we got the material laid down mostly smoothed got the drip rails on the side and uh, this stuff right here you buy it by the foot um, i bought several sticks they come in a for my local supplier, they come in a 16-foot stick, but you can you can buy it shorter. They call it a corner bead or a corner molding. And once you've cut it to length, you're going to get your butyl tape, and everything is about the butyl tape. You're going to butyl it. I'm putting one back here. Honestly, I think it does not need it in terms of sealing. This stuff is uh, bonded like just you know, concrete reinforced by super glue. But to give it a more finished look and protect it from stuff dinking up against it, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this molding on back here. And uh, again, this is just for more of a finished look. It'll hold water along here if allowed to sit. Uh, so, not happy about that. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it's not gonna leak. Not, not while I own the camper. Not while the next person owns the camper. This isn't gonna leak. But there will be, depending on how the camper is, or what have you, there will be an opportunity for water to puddle right here. But it's got nowhere to go until it evaporates or runs off. We're looking at fresh bent metal. This is actually black. It's got the protective coating and it's white on the side that I'm not using. We have inch and a half insulation. And my next little project here, I did close this off, off camera. Take a look, pretty sweet. All this metal here is in. Uh, but I am going to come under the bunk, the wing. I've not really shown anybody this. It's not been that important up until now. And close off some areas and foam it and then prep everything and get this black put in here. And I know what you're thinking. I'm doing it backwards. The black should have gone on here first so that that overlap overlaps it. But in this scenario, we're going to run it this way. That way I can drop it down if I ever need to get underneath there and service anything without having to peel the side off the camper. Insulation installed. Next, metal's going on. I've been hacking, cutting, measuring. This is for the tail lamp to go through, trimming around the bottom of the jacks. I believe this guy is ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there and see what happens next. So let me share with you the water management technique that I'm using. Uh, it's threefold. So the first thing is, well, it's fourfold, really. The first part is the overlaps of your metal, how they come at each other. Uh, the second part is putting a butyl tape between the folds and beating it down and stapling it down tight. This essentially creates a, you know, a water seal here. And then when you're putting your corner bead trim on, you're going to take the butyl, you're going to put it against your trim, and you're going to set your trim in to uh, kind of close that off. That's going to create a better looking corner. It's going to be more durable for things bumping into it. And then ultimately that extra bit of butyl is going to squeeze 
into that gap as I tighten it to kind of push over here. The final piece to this will be putting some uh, siliconized um, sealant, either clear or black. It just depends on kind of where it is, how it looks around the edges to kind of stop it from getting behind it. But theoretically, theoretically, between this multi-layered approach, we shouldn't have a lot of water issues, but all of us know that campers leak. It just doesn't matter what you do. It's going to leak sitting in here in the garage, you know, just sitting in here in a, in a building. It's what they do. But that's the strategy. That's the technique. And this is what I've been doing for hours and days. Uh, my next piece is going to overlap this one. Some people might cut a fancy 45 and do some things. I'm basically just going to overlap that. I'll show you what I'm doing up here. Is uh, I'm cutting the end, cutting a notch in it so that it sits over a little butyl underneath it. So all the water that splashes on this, it doesn't have anywhere to go but away. Okay. So, yeah, there you are with that trim all the way underneath here. And all the way around, that is what we're doing. There's a lot of butyl. There's two layers of butyl under here between the two layers of metal and then the trim. And then there's going to be some silicone sealant along the edge. So that's how we attempt to keep the wet stuff out. All right, so these little pieces take some time to kind of cut, trim, and fit. Uh, but essentially, I've created my overlap for this joint. As you can see, the butyl tape is well seated in the joint between these panels already. There's some more butyl. And this piece is going to, uh, in a perfect world, but that butyl grabs right away too on this metal. So anyway, that, that puts the piece up in place. Everything's sort of overlapped and then I'll run my screws in it and that makes up our trim panel, just like over here. Well, this is the beauty of having a lift. For this particular situation, my intention here is to raise the floor panel that I built. This is way heavier duty than we would normally want to consider or do. Made out of two by four pressure treat, ground contact, pretty heavy stuff. But uh, as you see, our 1970 truck camper actually had no insulation in the floor from day one. It's just uh, one by twos and plywood. So this is gonna go up, create insulation, create a waterproof barrier, or let's say a water resistant barrier between whatever's in the truck bed or whatever I put this in and you know the bottom of the camper. So I'm gonna raise this lift up little by little, get this thing in place, get it attached. And uh, you know, one cool thing about this, if the bottom of it suffers any damage, which could happen for a variety of reasons, I can just replace this. I don't have to get into the main camper. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this up. It's gonna give us an inch and a half of Arctic insulation and raise the height of it enough to clear the bed of a more modern truck since 1970. So there is a four season insulated, maybe two and a half season insulated booster plate made a pressure treat, ground contact board, and I'll come back and paint this black at a later date. Not important today. Okay, here we are. We're at the end of the video. We're not at the end of the camper yet, but we're at the end of this extremely long video. And believe me, I cut so much out of this to try to make it as short as it currently is which is very long. Come on down, let me just kind of show you where we are. The roof, as you see, is on, vents are on. I do have to come back and put some sealant around the roof vents, but otherwise it's done. I've got some uh, trash up there still. I have to come off and we'll roll out any more bubbles in it, but roof is done. Siding is pretty much done. Trim is pretty much done. Uh, 
This is just dust and dirt on it here right now. Our trim is in all the way around, doors around. You know, uh, something I didn't show much in the video was this door. I'm so proud of this door because it really is the 1970 door. My wife picked out this handle, which I think is amazing how it matches everything really well. I love the square trim on it and the door just really, really works great. We, even though this is the original one, we really completely reworked it, added all kinds of lumber and stuff inside of here. Lots of video I didn't show you because this, hour, this video would be six hours long if I just showed you what we did with this door. So very, very happy with that. Clothes is nice, super, super happy. It just looks amazing. The jacks, a little bit different story. I'm still working with this. The uh, previous owner had put this newer style jack on the old bracket. It wasn't good. This is my bubble gum welding. Let's don't look at it too close. How about this? Let's just cover it up. Uh, but this is secured on here now. Uh, all of the metal is in underneath and it's slick and sealed in. I have other parts like this right here. This is the bumper that'll go in the front to stop it in the truck bed and create the, uh, you know, keep it from chattering against that. So I'm gonna actually end up trimming this down a little, a little too fat, but we'll be able to work with it. Different style jack on the front. Uh, we'll work this out later. It is what it is. The rest of the uh, trim is all in. If you look carefully here, you'll see a little bit of a black shiny edge and that is the final trim and silicone material that's on top of that to complete, completely seal that in. This right up here is a to be determined uh, finishing piece. Didn't quite turn out like I expected, but I promise I'm gonna do something with that. The good news is it's totally waterproof. The bad news is it looks bad. So leave your comments below about it, but I know it looks bad. Still have to go ahead and run the wires back through the front for the front marker lamps and stuff, uh, but those aren't gonna take much time. The next little bit of the camper is going to be getting in the interior. My wife ordered some materials for that that we're gonna start working on and hopefully we'll bring that around. The other video I hope you'll tune in and watch has been the GMC. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of this since you waited all the way through. Um, this doesn't mean much right now to you, but believe me, it means a lot to me. So I've been very, very busy in here cleaning and prepping and painting and doing an awful lot of maintenance on this. We'll talk about this at a, at a later date. Uh, but this, for now, is going to be the mate to the camper. So we'll talk about this later. But anyway, take a look. Very, very happy. Appreciate all the time you've put in watching. And if you have any questions or comments, just put them in below. And I will answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Maybe uh, I'll make another video.